Good morning, everyone. So I got the knock again last night. Oh, what a pain. That's the fourth time in two years. And it's getting to be a real pain in the butt. Um, I don't panic over them anymore. The first time I got the knock, it was like really scary and kind of intense for me and I, I don't know how to describe it. it was like you know you get this and they're banging on the windows and you can hear these guys talking outside there was two of them and one guy uh the very first time the one guy says uh wow it's really you know locked up <laughs> and it's like good because <laughs> i had all my window covers on and everything and they couldn't see him so they just basically asked me my name to confirm because they'd already checked my license. They knew who they were talking to. And they said they were just doing a wellness check and was everything okay and offered me some help in, in the form of going to a shelter. And I graciously declined and thanked them. I'm perfectly happy here. I've got my bed. I can stretch out. I'm, you know, perfectly happy. And they left. And then about three nights later, one young cop comes by. And he had a chip on his shoulder, and I was not impressed. But again, it was the same thing of, you know, you get that knock in the middle of the night. And it kind of, it, it scares you because you're, you're fast asleep. And, you know, you get this knock. And uh, it, it throws you off. gets the adrenaline running. So I climbed into my my driver's seat and rolled down the window a little bit and he demanded my ID and I said well do I have to and he says yes you do he was a young guy like I said he had a chip on his shoulder so I dug out my ID and I couldn't find my insurance coverage it was on my phone somewhere and I'll be damned if I'm handing my phone over to him anyway so he was okay with that he he, he didn't care I wasn't driving he didn't pull me over I was sleeping in the back and parked in a safe spot where there was absolutely no signs that said no overnight parking. And uh, I was a little bit perturbed about that. On the third night, um, a little while later, and this these three incidents all happened last fall, got the knock again and it was an older gentleman. He was obviously training a younger cop and he was so polite and offered me um, to go to the shelter and did I need anything and blah 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 he was really nice but again it's like you know damn I'm trying to sleep and I told all three of them I told them look I got to get up for work in the morning is there something I can do for you I mean I, I said it really really nice and I was polite because there's no sense antagonizing them the other night I got the knock from two female cops and I was it didn't it didn't scare me this time like getting the knock i didn't have the adrenaline running it was just like oh damn you know again and it was a week night and i had to get up in the morning and you know these these two female police officers were very nice they insisted that i go to a shelter and the one the one cop that was talking uh, doing the majority of talking she was insisting that you know I needed to go to a shelter and I kept telling her no I'm perfectly fine in my car I have to go to work in the morning are we done um, and she's you know she says you know they're they're putting people up in hotel rooms and it's like well that's nice I'm glad that you know people who don't have shelter have that option and they get to spend a night in a hotel room I'm fine and you know, it kind of crossed my mind that, hmm, a hotel room, that would be great because then I could, you know, get up in the morning, have a shower, There's usually coffee makers in there, you know, that type of thing. And I thought that might be a little bit of a luxury for a time being, but then I thought of bed bugs. <laughs> And I have this on good authority by the Orkin guy that comes to do pest control at our office. 
uh, because we have homes attached to the office. Um, he, he mostly does it for rodents and stuff like that, but he had been in just that week and he had said, you know, have you had any reports of bed bugs? And I said, no, we haven't. And in the past there had been a problem. And he goes, oh, because North Bay is just full of them. There's a huge problem with bed bugs. And I'm thinking, ooh, yuck. You know, like that's the last thing I want to get is bed bugs. And that was going through my mind when these two female officers were trying to push me to go to a shelter. And I mean, she even went so far as to say, well, you know, we've we found people dead in their cars in the past. And, you know, we, we wouldn't want anything like that to happen to you. And I'm going like, are you fucking kidding me? You know, it's two o'clock in the morning. You've made sure I'm talking and I'm awake and everything like that. You've checked my license plate. You've run my tags. And you're sitting here trying to push me to go to a bed bug infested shelter. Um, no. <laughs> I don't think so. Because the city is not going to pay for, you know, five star hotels. And even five star hotels get bed bugs. They're going to find the cheapest block of motel rooms that they can if they're foot in the bill and those places are usually pretty run down and you know bug infested in some way shape or form and it, I mean this is all running through my mind and I'm thinking no you know like I'm not going to a hotel like that and bringing some kind of bug back into my car like there's absolutely no way I'll just stay the way I am thank you so it was kind of annoying, but I mean, I no longer get all upset or scared when I get the knock because you know, it's cops. I did have a knock once last fall at about four o'clock in the morning. It was one little tentative knock, but you know, you're always kind of awake for that or aware of that. And it was a guy looking for smokes. And I told them, no, I don't have any, like, go away. And that I was really angry with because I just yelled, what? <laughs> I wasn't laughing at the time. I was annoyed because they woke me up. <laughs> so I just yelled, what? <laughs> well, do you have any smoke? I think it was somebody checking to see if the car was empty because if it was empty, he was probably going to try and break in. I don't know, but it's like, <laughs> I, I think I scared him off by yelling, what? I was so angry. <laughs> uh, and had it been a cop, it would have been the same thing. It's like, what? Why are you waking me up? You know, all the, the, I, I'm in their system now because you know, all those four incidents of, of having the knock with the police officers they all ran my tags they all knew exactly who they were talking to and you know they check for um, a quick background check to see if you're wanted or you know you have any outstandings or anything like that and i don't have any of that so i'm like perfectly fine and uh, it, it, it's just like why are you waking me up you know who's driving the vehicle i'm in your system why do you have to knock on the window leave me the hell alone <laughs> you know it's like oh my god it's such a pain and i know it's not going to be the last time and i think i i suspect that uh, i have no basis in fact to say this but i suspect that they knock on car windows mostly for females because that same night that those two female officers were knocking on my window, my buddy Jim was parked ahead of me in his RV. And because they had woken me up, it's like, well, I was sitting here, might as well, you know, turn the engine on and get some heat in here before going back to bed. And I watched them and I fully expected them to drive up to his rig and run his plates and give him the knock and they didn't and it's like okay so i'm female i'm in a car you ran my plates 
so you know I'm female. You knock on my window and wake me up at like two or three o'clock in the morning on a weeknight when I have to go to work the next night, the next morning. And you don't give him the same honor. I'm not impressed. Like, why wouldn't you do that? I don't think they knew that he was a male, but it makes me want more and more to have my bus because if I had my bus being parked there, I'm almost positive they're going to leave me alone because it's a bus, it's a rig, it's set up for an RV, It'll be registered with RV tags. But because I'm in a car, you know, they're knocking on the window. And it's like, well, I've been in the car for well over two years now and four times got in the knock and at first I remember when I first started sleeping in my car it was hard to get to sleep because I was afraid of getting the knock and you know you're kind of afraid of the unknown if it's never happened to you and now that it's happened to me four times it's like okay this is getting old stop it <laughs> you know, like, you wouldn't come to my home, like, if I lived in a stick, stick and brick, knock on the door and do a wellness check, leave me the hell alone. It's none of your freaking business. But you have to be polite, even at three o'clock in the morning when you're annoyed, because they will find something. Like, the one cop, the young guy that had the chip on his shoulder, he's, like, got his flashlight and he's going, what's that, what's that, what's that? And I'm thinking, you're doing a fucking illegal search. Whatever is in my car is none of your business. You didn't pull me over. You have no business, you know, looking for reasons. And he's asking, you know, had I been drinking? Or was I doing any drugs? And like, he was really, really invasive. And I was getting really annoyed. And I seriously considered reporting him. And I thought, no, I'm not going to report him, even though I know I should. I'm not going to report him because... I, I don't need to attract attention to myself, but maybe I should have. Maybe I should have talked to a supervisor and said, hey, straighten this kid out because he was really, really invasive. He was very pushy. Like he did, he did a search, like not a physical get out of the car, I'm searching your car, but he was, you know, using his flashlight, he was doing a search and I was really perturbed about that. Not impressed at all. Anyway, so that was my night, and because of that, um, it's 4.30 in the morning, and I've been up for about an hour because I couldn't get back to sleep. Thank you very much. What a pain. Anyway, so because it's not a big thing when you get the knock, don't be afraid of the knock. There's nothing they can do. If you're not doing anything illegal, then... There's really nothing you can do. I mean, the one female cop the other night said that it was illegal to sleep in your vehicle. And I've heard different reports. From what I understand, it's not illegal. There's no law against it, but there's certain bylaws. And I think I might look into that. I mean, I'm still going to do it <laughs> regardless. I mean, arrest me. I mean, if you're going to wake me up, um, your wellness check, whatever you want, that's fine. But you're not doing anything about it. So leave me the hell alone. Don't let it bother you. It's annoying. But you, you must remain polite because you don't want to give them any reason to go on the defensive. At, you know, 2 o'clock in the morning when the, the police are approaching a vehicle sitting all locked up like ours usually are when we're sleeping in our vehicles. Um, it can be a tense moment for them, so try and see it from their side in that regard. Try not to let your annoyance show through too much. I know it's hard, but it's nothing to fear getting the dreaded knock. You know, fine, give me the knock, but like do it early in the evening before I go to sleep or early in the morning when I gotta get up. Like be useful, be my alarm clock. <laughs> anyway, on that happy note, have a wonderful day and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye for now.